That's right, guys. Welcome back to JW Class VW and my Turbo EFI build that we're doing on Goose. Yeah, baby. What Turbo? What Turbo are you talking about? That Turbo, of course. This Turbo. Oh, baby. What do we got going on, guys? What are we doing right now this weekend? That's right. We've got the transmission in. And we've got an engine to put in. Oh, baby. Right after this intro, guys, we're getting right into it. Talking about some awesome content today. Things are happening. Ooh, we'll see you in a second. So guys, that's right, we have done a lot of work off camera. <laughs> I know you guys can't stand that when I do off camera work, but with a lot of work off camera, we gotta get Goose up in the air. I'll show you what's been done, what we got going on. A few things ordered extra too from a Pete over at Aircool to kind of clean up my brake system. But let's first look at this engine and talk about that because there's been all kinds of questions about what exactly is going on with the engine. And some of you guys don't want to go back and look at the old video. So let me turn it around real quick and show you what's going on with that. Yeah. Well, here she is, man. The heart, the monster, the beast. That's going in there, and it, you can see it's got the cool tins on here. And this safety wire is just kind of keep things in place, you know, because sometimes these cool tins get a little bit loose. Everything has been sealed back up, and if you guys didn't know, what I d ended up doing was replacing the rings inside of these piston cylinders. Why? Because I broke them when I took them out. <laughs> yeah, rookie mistake. What we got here is an Autocraft oil pump that has siphoning capabilities because it's going to siphon oil out of the valve covers. And check out these trick. Oh, yeah, baby, race valve covers. Behind those, we've got some pretty cool Potter 1 to 4 rockers. Up on the top here, we've got a Dub Shop cam sink. We're also going to have a uh, Dub Shop uh, crank sink. <laughs> but yeah, this is going in there, guys. All kinds of details on this, and maybe I'll list those below for you. What's that back there? Well, that's to help hold my wiring harness in place once I get this beast inside of here. But let's get Goose up in the air, guys, and show you what's been done, well, since we last talked. Right, guys so one of the first things you'll notice that i've added in here is this the top tray in support it's a brace that goes on the top here and uh of course with anything that happens to be <laughs> empty we're having some fitment issues so what you'll see is uh i've got some work to do to kind of bend this bad boy and get it into position and i'm gonna be doing that off camera because for one it's like it's warming up dude it's got to be like probably 90 degrees in the garage right now so i gotta crank that fan up on high so i've got that to work on I'm, i want to show you the underside here so let's move underneath goose and show you what's been going on down there all right so let's take a quick gander first thing you'll notice is that the rear brakes are in and i reached down to pete over at air cooled and found out that uh, he had some cool brake lines to go ahead and i'm gonna replace these hard hard lines here with a banjo type brake line and a bracket to get rid of the zip line there. Thanks to uh, Type 4 Revolution out there for giving me the info on that. But uh, yeah, that'll help clean things up quite a bit. I still got to tighten down my my boots here, my axle boots. They're they're loose until I, I have things on the ground, and that's where I'm going to tighten those up. You'll see I have my Wasp starter installed. Yeah, the Wasp starter has been installed. I had to clock this thing down. The, the way the, the Wasp starter works is the mounting plate on it allows you to clock it and you can probably see that better on the inside here see those little holes it allows you to clock it so that it fits better because the way it came it was running into the kaffir bar the top the, the top bar the top support that comes across here is running into that and that's no bueno so i clocked it down a little bit to get it to fit right without causing any issues so that's good to go we got the strange shocks installed the strange shocks sweet I have not clicked these up at all. They're, they're still on the initial setting. Uh, I'll probably go to at least the, uh, the the third setting or the middle setting to see if that's you know a good place to start. So we gotta get the engine in and then we're gonna go ahead and test the fuel system one more time through the manifolds to make sure that uh, there's no leaks before we start putting all the painted tinware in and the fiberglass Bernie Bergman fan shroud. Cause we don't want to jack it up man we don't want to get uh, gas all over stuff but we have all kinds of work to do and i'll bring you guys back in a little bit once i get at least this bracket fitted into place and then the engine in i might bring you back once i get the bracket done and the engine in i went to home depot 
and picked up some zinc plated hardware to replace this 3 8 hardware here some uh zinc plated 3 8 and i think once i start to suck this thing down and get this formed get the uh, shape right that uh it's gonna fit a lot better so i'll see you guys in a second and show you where i'm at a little longer than a few minutes later I'm sure you guys can hear the pump going kind of got it hot wired right now we got to go ahead and run the pump for a little bit with the manifolds hooked up so I can check for leaks. And it's quieted down quite a bit, the pump, but we are still holding at the uh, 40 PSI of pressure, which is good. I don't have any leaks, which is good. Yeah, guys, I got the engine in. Hey, <laughs> everything is hooked up. I've got my little bar zip tied to my wearing harness, holding things in place. Now we got to go ahead and turn everything off and pull the manifolds out and start putting in some of the tin. That's the next step. Right now I wanted to check this to make sure we didn't have any leaks at the manifolds. And we are good to go. Good stuff, guys. I'll bring you back in a little bit when I get that stuff into place. Yeah! It is Sunday, it's a couple days later and I've got quite a bit of work done. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's going on, but you just kind of watched me doing the replacement of the spark plugs. Remember I was running with those, let me show you real quick. <laughs> so yeah, I was, I did have the DCPR7Es installed, which is the non iridium plugs. And I went to the DCPR8 EIX and I was wrong on this guy, this is wrong. This wasn't a 12 millimeter and I needed the 12 mil millimeter uh, three quarter inch reach radium spark plugs and this is a little bit hotter one too it's an 8e instead of like a 70 so a little bit hot, hotter plug and it's the radiums and they're all installed now pretty cool you guys probably asking like why were you putting some uh, magic marker or permanent marker on there well if i can i like to clock the the open end of the spark plug you know on that radium tip i like to clock that down into the cylinder itself i guess that's like an old school trick i learned a long time ago just to help out with the spark and you see on this one I was not able to clock it down with the uh, with the correct kind of orientation. So what you can do is you can add additional washers to these spark plugs, but I'm not super worried about that. But yeah, that's been done. Good to go on those spark plugs. So what do we got going on now? Well, I got a ton of wiring done on, on the bottom side underneath. Got the turbo header installed. Got all, all the oil lines plumbed. I'm gonna go ahead and get goose up in the air, show you guys what's going on there. And I've also got to go ahead and tighten up the boots. You know, the, uh, the clamps on the boots, but you gotta have tension on the axles. You know, you wanna make sure that there's some tension on there. I have some blocks that I built and I'm gonna get Goose up in the air and lower her down on those blocks so I can get up underneath there and tighten those up. While I'm underneath there, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the trans. That's right, guys, it's time to fill up the trans with some, uh, some uh, 80, 90 or 70, 80 weight, whatever you guys prefer to run with. I'm going to use, let's see what I got. So yeah, I got a storm in here because, well, this Valvoline 8090 I got from my Jeep Back when I used to have a Jeep, it's been sitting around for a minute, but I got the 7590 from uh, Valvoline as well, but I'm running the uh, primary is gonna be this Lucas Heavy Duty 8090, and then uh, what I'll end up doing is if I need to top it off, I've got the 8090 Valvoline over here that I will top it off with. What are you guys using for gear oil for your transmission? Comment below, guys, with your particular type. I'm sure that you have your own. And then my engine oil, I'll be running the, uh, the VR1, and I've got 2050 up here. I'm not gonna start off with that. I've got the 1030 that's underneath there somewhere down there in a box. But uh, yeah, transmission fluid, we're doing the uh, 80, 90 weight. And then uh, it'll be time to get the top buttoned up, guys. The top. Gotta add the shroud, add the manifolds. I've already tested the manifolds, make sure they've got no leaking issues. You guys saw that. Okay, guys, I'm going to give you a quick look underneath here. I was up pretty late last night getting this all situated. Got the boost control solenoid hooked up and mounted. 
Got the oil lines all ran. And this is some special high temp protectant. It's got that uh, like fiberglass mesh inside, but this rubber jacket outside is high temp rated as well. And I put that along with the uh, boost. Those are Kevlar lines, these boost lines for reference from the wastegate to help manage boost. I'll tell you what, those oil lines are real fun. Wire harness has been completed from this point. The only main thing I have left, like I told you, is for the uh, the tech. We've got the reference for oil pressure up top and oil pressure to the my idiot light up inside of the car. With oil temperature, which will be feeding the hall tech and also one of my gauges. We've got the head temp or oil temp more of a head temp sensor right here and then we got the trans filled up so it's time to put this bad boy back on the ground the last thing that I'll be putting on underneath here will be the air cooled brakes brake lines on the back side once I get those done then uh, the bottom half will be buttoned up yeah pretty sweet Twenty four hours later. All done, all together, looking pretty, looking good. And somebody out there going crazy with the blower. <laughs> Lots of work, guys. Three days jammed out a lot of work, got a lot of th things done, and the little bit of video there you show with me cranking it was just priming things up to see if I had any oil leaks. And... Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> yes, yes, we have an issue. An issue that I would like to say is a simple one. But guys, you're gonna have to tune in next time to where I'm going to go, to go ahead and explain what happened. What's going on, and hopefully by the time you see the next video, <laughs> it'll be fixed. And we'll be getting everything ready to go for programming the Hall Tech and getting this bad boy fired up for the first time. But as for this video, as for this weekend of jamming stuff out and getting it done, we're done, guys. We are done, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for all my new subscribers. Appreciate all you guys. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And check out the website. Check out the website over here, guys. If you want a channel sticker, that's where you get it. See you in the next one, guys. This is Jason with the JW Classic VW, and I'm out.